so good evening to all so today we are starting our uh, series of webinar all these uh, days we were talking about the importance and relevance of cost pricing and all those things on agriculture uh, area but today we are moving into a different area where we are trying to address the critical issue of uh, farm suicide farmer suicide basically uh, which is a very important thing wherein we as a cost and management account accountant are not only responsible for uh, keeping the cost and pricing of the farmers and agriculture produce but also we are equally responsible for uh, valuing the life of the farmers who are working day in and day out for the benefit of the entire society so keeping that as the theme today uh, we have organized this webinar on the topic prevention of farmer suicide role of agriculture cost management so i welcome all of you to this today's program so before we start our program it is our customary practice to play our uh, institute anthem so now i would request our uh, team to play the uh, institute anthem asatu ma sadgamaya tamasu ma jyotir gamaya behalf of agriculture cost management board myself uh, cma n ravindranath kaushik member of the acm would like to start the program today so first of all we have our uh, young dynamic uh, uh, chairman of uh, the acm board uh, mr harshad s deshpande i would like to invite harshad s deshpande ji to welcome the gathering Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. And uh, so uh, we last time we organized uh, this program, and uh, due to some technical reasons, we we are not able to hold it. That is why perhaps we are again holding this uh, webinar on this important topic. So friends, uh, we are uh, uh, on. I, as the chairman of uh, the Agricultural Cost Management Board, I'm thankful to my colleagues that we are organizing this uh, programs on various uh, topics which are uh, relevant for us as a management accountant, and we keep on focusing this agriculture, which is one of the biggest. Uh, uh, we don't call it as a industry, but it's a big part of our economy. So we say that 50-55 percent of our economy is agri-based. So one of the topics uh, what we are going to discuss and we are having a lovely speaker with us. We are uh, eager. So this uh, I always believe that uh, this agricultural cost management is more of uh, it's not only a topic pertaining to costing or finance, but it's a more of a socio-economic topic. So it is not that just uh, you know in other cases we do 
uh, the cost management or the financial management with respect to uh, industry. So that is more or less, I will say that it's a, uh, uh, it's a pure finance topic, but whereas in agriculture, it's more of a social economic topics. So this uh, uh, one of the last uh, uh, few years, what you are observing is that the income of farmers which is happening to be one of the key constraints for our economy and uh, ultimately our farmers are not financially uh, well off they many times the pricing is the issue they are not able to recover the cost and ultimately they uh, they are into uh, losses in most of the cases it is a cash losses so they have to borrow the money so they they go into a debt trap they are many times they are uh, facing a credit problem, so they have to go to the private lenders, and this is how you know they. This is a debt trap, or this is a trap in which they get more and more uh, uh, into. And you know, uh, this is uh, one of the uh, main reasons. So I was just uh, trying to learn something about this uh, pharmacy sites. So it is said that most of these cases are pertaining to the uh, causes which are pertaining to the financial commitments or the defaults. So, which is a matter of deep, deep concern for our country, and uh, we as a cost management, if uh, the point remains is that this happens because of the cost management, because ultimately in industry we always say that keep pricing is market based. So, do whatever the happens that if I am able to manage my cost in the anticipation of some price, so I will be in a better position to equip myself to uh, uh, be. Uh, I will put it uh, tolerate. It, uh, I will be able to tolerate the pricing fluctuations. So this is something which uh, perhaps uh, came to our mind. And uh, uh, Chawa sir and uh, Kaushik sir, they have uh, taken this initiative, and uh, we are grateful that uh, that Mr. Pandey sir is there with us to discuss about this. Uh, what we call it as a socio-economic topic. So uh, I'm thankful to all of you for joining in good numbers and. Uh, I look forward for a great session as usual. So thank you very much. I request uh, Koshik sir to kindly uh, take it over. Uh, thanks, Desh Pandey sir. Uh, so there are two Desh Pandey's. Okay, it's Ashad Desh Pandey. Thank you for chairman of our uh, ACM board uh, for bringing the perspective, right perspective for and setting the context for uh, today's deliberation by an expert uh, who is none other than uh, Mr. Vinayak S. Desh Pandey. Um, so I would like to introduce Vinayak S. Desh Pandey. Before that, uh, I would uh, uh, like to thank uh, uh, the president of our institute, uh, Sri Arvindi Dalwadi ji, and also our uh, uh, vice president, uh, Mr. Uh, Bibhuti uh, Bhushan Nayak. Uh, in their absence here today, because of their work schedule, they were not able to attend uh, today's uh, webinar. Uh, but they have given all their support to us in order to conduct this uh, webinar uh, and uh, reach the message to the larger, larger audience, uh, that is especially the cost and management accountants who are participating in large number in today's program. So uh, to begin the session with, I would like to introduce uh, today's speaker of the day, uh, Mr. Vinayak S. Deshpande ji. So he is not a new person to us because he was there as a member of uh, Agriculture Task Force uh, Committee of our institute, Institute of Cost Accountants of India in 2021. So he was uh, is uh, right uh, from the beginning of uh, setting up this ACM. Uh, he was there, he is there with us and he is also supporting us with a lot of his uh, 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 initiative ideas and also thoughts, especially in the areas of agriculture costing and management. So he is always there supporting us in all the issues and uh, he is standing as a guiding factor for the cost and management accountants especially in areas relating to the agriculture and farming. So he is the present uh, vice chancellor of uh, uh, GH Raiswaniya University, uh, Amaravati, Amaravati, and uh, his education qualification is done masters in economics and masters in commerce, and also he has uh, uh, done his MPhil, MBA and PhD holder. And is uh, having a total teaching experience of uh, more than 37 years and uh, is a professor since 12 years and he has held various positions like uh, vice chancellor pro vice chancellor vice chancellor acting assistant director registrar officiating and uh, rtm in new university uh, nagpur 
and uh, he has done lot of uh, he is a uh, research guiding uh, uh, professor and he has been uh, he has awarded phd under uh, for more than 32 cases so that means he has guided those people to pursue phd and he has successfully guided them in possessing that phd scholars and he has conducted uh, major and minor research projects uh, are sponsored by nabard government of maharashtra ugc uh, etc and is associated with uh, ugc scheme for uh, transdisciplinary research for uh, india and uh, india's development economy as an expert member and is also an executive member of all india economic association so these are some of his uh, a uh, credentiality which i would like to share with you but uh, his credentials definitely when you talk about a person who has uh, 37 years of experience definitely it will be a uh, very uh, a very huge lot of exposure and experience he will be having but due to constraint of his time i am just restricting his uh, 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 credentiality to only limited thing but uh, today i would request him to uh, address our members on a very 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 important topic uh, because uh, just now we are popping into the summer and uh, since it's a lot of uh, states have already uh, started facing the heat of uh, uh, the uh, problem of uh, the failure of crops because of uh, scanty rainfall in this uh, particular season i think definitely this year will be a challenging year for farmers as well as the government to address this issue i think this is the right time we have uh, opted for the correct topic uh, which is prevention of farmer suicide role of agriculture cost management so i think this is a very apt uh, topic at the right point of time uh, where we need to work it out for the next 4 to 5 months where this uh, type of suicides may increase because of various challenging situation which farmers are coming across so without taking much time now i would request uh, the speaker of the day uh, dr vinayak uh, uh, shridhar deshpande ji to address our members on the topic over to you sir thank you sir thank you so much for uh, generous uh, introduction ravindranath ji cma ashwin dalwadi ji president icwai cma harshad S. Desh Pandey Ji, Chairman, Agriculture Cost Management Board, ICWAI, Bhavati Bhushan Nayak Ji, Vice President, Giri Ketra Ji, all the learned members of ICWA from various chapters. Good afternoon to everyone, those who are online. I am thankful. to the icwa for providing me an opportunity to share some of the views relating to prevention of farmer suicides and what role agriculture cost management can play in the agriculture sector this is the topic assigned to me i will try to incorporate as many aspects as possible relating to the present agriculture sector scenario in india but my focus would be mainly on maharashtra because maharashtra is the state where we all know that the agrarian crisis which we talk about that is quite severe and therefore vidarbha and marathwada are the regions which are notorious for the farmer suicide so i'll try to demonstrate some of the problems associated with these regions as we are aware and ravindranath ji has rightly pointed out that there are many challenges which this particular sector is facing and uh, making food system in sustainable coming cult in the wake of climate change and therefore there are many new challenges which agriculture sector is facing of course there are lot many institutes to take care of agriculture pricing apmc framework agriculture market regulation act but 
issues when we talk about agriculture compared to industry there is nothing like unique commodity in the case of agriculture for example wheat so for preparing pasta you need different kind of wheat and therefore you have lot many variations different products are designed in agriculture catering to the different market segments and the basic problem is there is supply reversibility in industrial sector but you cannot reverse it it's absolutely difficult in the agriculture and therefore the process is not reversible that is the biggest difficulty so if there are no rains then whatever the sowing occurred that needs to be repeated and that involves additional amount of cost so broadly we can say that there is no flexibility as such compared to other manufacturing sector and that is i think the issue which uh, compels us to discuss agriculture sector separately in terms of pricing in terms of cost of production than the industries and uh, day by day we observe and as rightly pointed out by harshad deshpande ji where we find that the dependency on agriculture is rising but the incomes of the farmers they are reducing day by day and that is also the another challenge whatever the water we require particularly for the crops like rice sugar cane so it is an export these products like rice and sugar cane it is like exporting water also and we all are aware that how the water is becoming scarce which is one of the important components of agriculture product of course we can find out how we can have pricing for water when we export products and therefore we have to think about water saving technology along with pricing of water that needs to be done in a very very careful manner land which is one of the important aspect that land commands better price it is like gold and therefore it is the most important asset for the farmers so we cannot expect that immediately they will move to the other sector if there are difficulties and therefore that crisis it continues for a very long period of time so there are different names which we give to these uh, crises like we talk about distress in farm sector we say farm crisis we say agrarian crisis they are interchangeably we use it but we have to understand that when we talk about agrarian crisis as such it is not the crisis purely in related to farm or agriculture but there are associated activities which you find in the agriculture sector and in general the region face crisis and that's why we consider it as agrarian crisis as such so when we consider the income levels average income of the households nss rounds they provide data relating to the situation assessment of farm households and 17th and 77th rounds they have shown the income of agriculture households and we have also been talking about doubling of farm income so before thinking about doubling of farm income let us try to find out what is the current income status of the agriculture sector and what is the earning of farm households so when we talk about earning of farm households there is income from cultivation there is wage earning to some extent along with cultivation then there is income earning from livestock income earning from salaries of household members from other jobs all these factors need to be considered and for a family of five national average income as shown by nss rounds it was 6426 rupees per month in the year 2013 so it was merely 6426 which has increased to rupees 10000 per household in 
2018-19. So this is the situation of agriculture. And in 2016-17, we declared that we have to double the income of the farmers. How to double it? It's self is a challenge. to about central rate of inflation then these 10,000 nominal income of the farmer may come down to 8,032 rupees and therefore when we consider the component of the income we find that livestock income that has also gone down and uh, there is no concrete data available now relating to livestock as there was no livestock sale census also so the fact of the matter and therefore we talk about because agriculture income declined and percent it is declined and so as i told you the components of the income as salaries of households wage earning and livestock and if you go component wise then we observe that Whatever the rise in the level of income we find, it is because of wage level income and livestock income. So these components are rising and everybody, particularly cultivators, those who are owning farms, they are worried that how much is the wage rates and how fast they are rising. And that is how you find that overall cost, because from our point of view, we have to think about the cost management and its role and therefore how this cost is picking up that needs to be analyzed in a better manner. So agrarian crisis when we talk about it is much larger than the cultivators problem and therefore as we have seen that percentage of Indian farmers they are about 53 percent and primary source of income is agriculture the criteria which government has used is about 180 days or more or continuously if the individual is involved in for a six months three to six months in farming he becomes the main cultivator that is how we define the cultivators so suicide commitments we consider as commitment but farming occupation we can say took their lives and that is how commit when we said committing suicide it becomes crime but then we have to think that how uh, uh, difficult it is to survive and therefore those causes need to be analyzed and that is how we can uh, 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 think about the factors behind it certain factors are identified we work with indira gandhi development research Institute Mumbai when the farmers suicides uh, committed and then the report was presented some of the points I'll like to show you from that uh, uh, report also so we will be able to find out how the farmer suicide and the uh, uh, crisis in agriculture is becoming severe uh, is, is, is this screen visible sir is my screen yes. visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. It's Thank visible, you. Sir. So, so uh, suicides are acts by individuals, but in a social context, as pointed out by Durkin, he published the paper and he pointed out that it could be because of social isolation, individualism, excess of social integration altruistic breakdown of social regulation or excess of social regulation. There are many reasons behind this, but if we picked up the Darkim's analysis, then as far as our areas are concerned, especially Maharashtra is concerned, we observe that farmers, they are not nowadays sharing their grief, sharing their problems with the fellow farmers and Earlier, the situation was 
farming community themselves used to manage all these kinds of crisis problem, but that process probably has stopped and that led to the severe crisis. So earlier under tree, they used to sit in the evening and during that discussions, they used to share their problems also and other farmers, co-farmers, their friends, they used to help them, but probably it seems that process has stopped maybe because of television and other kinds of factors which you find nowadays and that has also created pressure on the individual farmer. So an individual could face a situation where he or she is confronted with a combination of number of possibilities. But as we have conducted survey and that time Asrav Deshmukhji was the chief minister of Maharashtra and that time the committee was appointed to find out the causes and what can be done in order to overcome the end crisis. So our observation was that isolation is one of the important issues relating to this kind of crisis. Of course, from time to time, you find that the policy regime is also changing and that also adversely affect the income of the farmers and that leads to economic crisis. And because of the economic crisis, uh, there is inability to get daughters marriage. And in such a situation, we can consider that there are certain strict, stringent social norms and relating to especially expenditure in the marriage. And that is also one of the contributing factors for this kind of issues. So what are the questions relating to farmers suicide? What is the nature of the current agrarian crisis? Is it largely related with creation? Because Vidarbha and Maratwada area mainly they are growing cotton. So we try to analyze that what actually is happening to the uh, cotton pricing and particularly the import duties of cotton. One factor which we realized during that particular period was, was as I pointed out that there is a sudden policy shift and that time the import duties on cotton particularly slashed down and therefore imported cotton it started entering in Indian market and that has affected the cotton market in India. And therefore that factor also needs to be considered external factors, especially in the process when the markets are open. So that also creates impact on the domestic agriculture sector. Of course, it is also associated with rural credit scenario and then withdrawal of state support from the rural agrarian scenario many times also is the contributing factor and that we have analyzed. I will show you how the capital formation in agriculture sector and especially investments in agriculture sector, they are not picking up, particularly from the government side. Whatever the investments you find, it is the private investment, but as there is no sufficient incentives to make the private investments, you find that investments in agriculture sector is also not picking up to the extent required except by the large holding farmers. Is there a geographical concentration of suicides? To some extent, you find that when there is a, a lack of irrigation facilities mainly, or if the area is unirrigated area, then you find that region uh, uh, affects and therefore you have the agrarian crisis relating to a particular geographical location. Is it of a seasonal nature? Is it high among certain social group, age wise, caste wise or uh, uh, land size that is aggressive in its pursuit of pertaining economic well-being? So that time, of course, it is a seasonal in a nature in a sense if the rainfall is not regular and if it is uh, irrational, there you find that the suicide rates they go up particularly when there are double uh, cropping which is to be undertaken again and then seeds are to be grown and there you find that the total amount of expenditure and cost of production it gets totally disturbed. Is indebtedness an important risk factor? Of course indebtedness is also one of the important factors. Money lenders, private money lenders they also contribute for this kind of crisis 
and there are many socio-economic risk factors that need to be seen. Broadly, if you see the difference in number of suicide by farmers and farm laborers. So here we find that Maharashtra is the state which, which is having the highest farmers suicide and the number is picking up and that you can see from the graph 2022 and 2020 level. The matter is compared to all other states, Maharashtra's agrarian crisis, we can say it is on comparatively on the higher side uh, in relation with the states which we have shown Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Haryana, Karnataka, Kerala, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, or, or even Uttar Pradesh. So that's why uh, uh, Maharashtra state is always a focal point whenever we talk about the crisis. This particular figure I am taking from political economy of Maharashtra after globalization was the paper written by Khalil Shah and uh, one of my very close uh, uh, colleague, Dr. R.S. Deshpande. So from that paper, I got this uh, uh, information. One farmer, farm laborer dies by suicide every hour in India. So about 11,290 such suicide cases were reported from across the country last year, according to latest National Crime Records Bureau data released on 4 December 2023. So this is an increase of 3.7% from 2021 when 10,281 deaths were reported. So it is an increase of 5.7% when compared with 2020 figures. So these farmer suicide deaths have been showing an increasing trend since 2019 again. So we thought that now it is slowing down, but you find that these deaths are recorded every year. And unfortunately, that number is picking up. Survey had found that the highest uh, income for a farming household was rupees 4,063, which came from wages in return for serving as agricultural labor. And this was followed by livestock and then cultivation, which saw a deep, uh, steep decline from 48% in 2013 to 38% in 2019. That is what I talked about uh, in my introductory remarks. So overall, farmers' income have not increased much. So survey, which is the most recent official data showed that the monthly income in 2019 was only rupees 10,218 per month and it was 6,426 in 2012-13. So one can imagine how difficult it is to survive. And obviously there are limited employment opportunities and increasing small and marginal farmers. So over the years, if we see what is the contribution of agriculture in the total gross domestic produce in India, and as pointed out by our uh, Dr. Deshpande, that 56% it is reduced in 50-51 to 25%, and uh, uh, where, uh, in uh, 2001 census, 58% of the total workforce are still dependent on agriculture. So on one hand, we find reduction in the contribution of agriculture in the total gross domestic product, and on the other hand, the number of persons working in this sector that is rising. So this basically suggests that rural non-farm employment opportunities that are limited and therefore the operational holdings in India, they are increased by 2.36 times from 48.9 million to 115.6 million. But when one looks at composition, it is only the marginalization of the agriculture sector. So these marginal and small size class of farmers, it has increased from 51% to 62%. And in certain cases, there is a problem of viability of this agriculture farm. So one study indicated that minimum seven hectares of land is required to make use of modern technology. And unfortunately, our size of uh, small and marginal farmer that is rising. So in absolute number, large size class that is 10 hectares and above, it started declining since 70s and medium size class 
uh, that uh, and small medium class that has increased that is the trend which you find and therefore basically we find that dependence on agriculture is largely among the ranks of marginal and small farmers and particularly agriculture laborers so this kind of structural changes which are taking place in this sector is also need to be studied so small and marginal farmers is thinking big and willing to experiment and take risks so you find that their asset holding capacities they have increased beyond a certain limit and all these kinds of two wheelers and other kinds of vehicles they are also they must use it but at the same time we have to see whether their incomes are matching with these kinds of changes which are taking place in the asset holding and that is also the problem so many a times uh, the 712 that is satbara we call it in maharashtra that document is used in order to take loan for vehicles and that also is the another important factor that needs to be considered they are thinking big it's a good thing but that needs to be supplemented with the higher levels of income and therefore farmer is not able to visualize that bad monsoon leading to crop failure or a gulf in the market it can put him in that kind of indebtedness and that is crashing the dreams so what is the performance of maharashtra's economy particularly till 21 22 whatever the data was available i tried to recollect from a different uh, uh, agency mainly from the uh, uh, scholars uh, studies so agriculture and allied sector we can say how it is uh, going down uh, particularly in case of the uh, total amount of contribution and the difference between the sectoral contribution if you see then what is the difference between industry and agriculture the difference between service and agriculture that also one can see from this particular uh, uh, table and that table gives you the information relating to this so that uh, if you see the uh, figures then it creates a very positive impression with good growth uh, across sectors but the growth of any economy has to be as far as possible balanced across the sectors but you find that sectoral contribution if you look at it is absolutely in imbalanced status so share of agriculture and allied sector has declined over the years and decline particularly was sharper after 1990 and 91 which you can see how it has gone down to about 13.58 but at the same time workforce presented in the table afterwards if you uh, i'll show it to you uh, that has not declined at the same rate and therefore you find the crisis uh, 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 crisis situation in this particular sector so the state also has dishonorable distinction of being at the top among the states with high density of farmer society and out of 5570 farmer society in india in 2020 Maharashtra stands at the top of the list with 2,567 societies. So Maharashtra also has the distinction of investing large sum on major irrigation in the country, having maximum number of impounded structures, small dam, big dams, and still having one of the lowest proportion of net irrigated area under crops, and that that has created disproportionality in terms of sharing the water for different kinds of crops. So. in western maharashtra you find that because of sugar cane lot of water is required so there is in equitable distribution of water also particularly in vidarbha if you look at the distribution of water we have the eastern part of vidarbha where you have paddy and there the water level and the use of water is much higher compared to the western part of vidarbha that is how you find the imbalances in the use of irrigation water also the state in an agrarian economy and even though agriculture and allied sectors contribute 13% of gdp this sector provides food raw material to the aggregate economy and that supports more than 60% of workers and probably this is one of the important issues that need to be discussed in the context of crisis 
So sectoral growth rates in the gross state domestic product, broadly we can just say how that uh, growth is picking up. Particularly, if you see decadal growth, 1980-81 to 1991, 3.67, then it went to 3.81 and 4.03. Compared to other sectors, you find that there is a lopsided development. These are the growth rates where service sector you find is picking up at the highest possible level, but industry and agriculture sector, it is not picking up to the extent you find in the other two sectors of the economy. So what is the observation? So the share of agriculture and light sector has declined. And at the same time, you find that the workforce in the uh, agriculture sector, it has not declined at the same rate. And that is how you find that there is a clear evidence that farm income per capita has sharply declined. And when we compare increasing sectoral income generation, service sector gained in the process, industrial sector followed by service sector, but the agriculture sector remained at the bottom. And therefore, you have imbalance in the overall sectors. So, so sectoral rates of growth, which we have presented, it is a usual tool which normally analytical economists describe. And therefore, that many of main observations are that these three time spans which I have shown agriculture sector grew at a lower rate of growth and GSTB showed consistent high growth. So service sector is the major contributor and therefore that clearly establishes obviously that capital which is required available. It goes and attracted by the service sector and the industrial sector. As I told you that crisis situation also occurred because investment is not picked up to the uh, at the rate required in order to develop that particular sector. So recent report by government of Maharashtra on estimates of uh, capital formation, it shows that how this sector is neglected in the process and therefore market centralism followed by the state public investment needs to be poured uh, into the agriculture sector and therefore the agrarian distress generated is the outcome of the uh, sector which is neglected in different kinds of areas. And these are the broader uh, picture uh, relating to gross fixed uh, capital formation and how the agriculture sector's investment has not picked up to the extent the investment in service sector has picked up. This is this can be shown broadly from the table that how the sectoral rates of growth, they are ultimately associated with how the changes are taking place in the overall level of capital formation to which broadly we call as investment because the data which is available is relating to the gross capital formation and that cross capital formation is not picking up. Share of number of operational holding across size so it's a matter of great concern that Maharashtra has nearly 80% of its operational holding under two hectares and close to 30% have operational holdings less than 0.2 hectares or near one acre. And that is how the disturbing fact is that 96% of holdings are under five hectares. And therefore you find that uh, managing agriculture sector in an economical manner. That itself is a problem broadly. Uh, one can see this from the size classes in uh, particularly in terms of hectares, how it is rising, especially in terms of small holding. So what are the policy suggestions uh, relating to that? Policy intervention, it should not be restricted to suicide households because as we know that there is a deeper agrarian crisis that uh, that needs to be analyzed and that can be averted by policy intervention. So these policy interventions, what, whatever they are required, that, uh, 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 that is shown here, I'll just pull apart certain points which I would like to make before we go towards that particular policy suggestions. Now, basically, when we the and uh, the farmer suicide 
and the other important issue. What needs to be seen is farmers are to be protected as well as labor is also to be protected. But I feel that you cannot have similar kind of laws for both. And because we have equity concern in agriculture, many a times we consider farm labor and the cultivators as same, but that needs to be rectified. That is what I feel. So in order to have the zero farmer suicide, let us make it happen. Then from that point of view, we have to see whatever the laws which government tried to uh, brought earlier was 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 they adequate enough to overcome the problem of agrarian crisis spurious seeds is also one of the important factors and then the procurement minimum support price that part i think i will i will talk for a while and then we will go for the policy planning as far as the market system as such is concerned in agriculture and then there are certain political decisions which also need to be considered along with that particularly pre, uh, pre provision of food grains especially for 80 crores of people in india that also i think needs to be analyzed and studied in detail 80 crores of the population is getting this benefit it started during covid and quite justifiable that during COVID that particular scheme was launched, but it is continued even now. And if time permits, I will show you how much is the burden on the government exchequer because of this 80 crores. And then if the amount which we are using for providing this free ration, that amount probably if would have been used for investment purpose, situation would have been different and that is what I talked about the policy prescription which is required. So basically we have to find out that how far we have given justice to this particular sector. Like we have Commission for Agriculture Cost and Price because there our cost management role is very important and 1965 two institutions came one is Agriculture Price Commission and another was Food Corporation of India to procure food. Farm laws which brought the focus was on freedom that will be given to markets and this procurement price of course will be continued along with the market system. But one thing needs to be remember that when we talk about the politicians it is tightrope walk for them because MSP not supported to bring down price that is to be declared and at the same time consumers are also to be protected. So they are protecting consumers interest as well as farmers interest. On one hand price of the agriculture products it should not go down beyond a certain limit. So you require minimum support price and in order to protect consumers interest even though the farmers are getting good export market particularly in terms of onion or in terms of sugar you find that exports are banned that also happens and how to balance these two interests that itself is a challenging task if farmers allowed to sell the products without any restrictions then probably the overall income status of farmers may go up but at the same time Government is also worried about the pricing of the agriculture products that ultimately fuels the overall inflation. So that also we don't want. That is the kind of situation. So therefore, giving free food also is not the wise step. What is happening and what are the consequences of this? More or less we find that no farmers in any areas particularly in Punjab and Haryana, uh, you find that wheat and rice, there is a procurement, there is a minimum support price. So it is becoming the monocropping culture in this particular state. In most of the states, it is monocropping and what is required to overcome the agrarian crisis is to have the crop diversification. 
and diversification of crop itself is a challenging task. For example, if you produce very over a period of time, and if you are assured that you are getting good income out of paddy, then obviously the environmental issues nowadays relating to the water scarcity that crops up and therefore many a times policy makers are suggesting that why not to go for crop diversification and that diversification of crop is important because water table is going down day by day and that also is the worrisome issue. Water which was available for 15 feet now we find that after digging 150 feet you get water. That is the kind of change in the water table. Excessive use of water because of particular cropping like sugar cane, wheat or rice or uh, paddy in Vidarbha and therefore any policy that does not change this that creates a problem and therefore procurement was more than production in Punjab in many cases because of uh, this procurement policy many other states they also started bringing their produce there and therefore procurement system does not, not exist in Bihar but it exists in other states you find that the movement of that kind of product it starts and that is how you find that the pricing as such it becomes the distorted kind of pricing you get. What is required is farmers should be assured of higher income, but at the same time incentives schemes required in order to have the investments by the farmers in the farming in the farm sector and that is not picking up to the extent required. Let me tell you during 2009-14 then government procured just 1.52 lakh metric tons of pulses from farmers. In later period of time, that is 2014 to 19, this government procured 76.85 lakh metric tons of pulses. You can see 1.52 lakhs to 76.85 lakh procurement. And that is how the burden is rising. Of course, this is a good move where farmers are assured of the market by the government, but at the same time market gets restricted and therefore we need diversification. It is good, but if one variety succeeds, farmers will normally rely on that crop only and therefore there is a tendency to become monoculture. So system must give them enough income and innovation in products. I think that is what is required and particularly you find that the current problem is about how to have the nutrition food. Masses are consuming roti and chawal, but at the same time we have to see how the additional nutrients can be given and for that diversification would be required. There are certain good things happening relating to soil health card and uh, one would be able to find out one problem, uh, one's own problem. That is a good thing, but at the same time, we have to believe on scientists and whatever the varieties they are bringing that needs to be propagated. For example, we have different kinds of wheat. Now there is black wheat, which is considered as antioxidant, and therefore it is five to seven times uh, better than the normal wheat that the scientists are pointing out. But these kinds of innovations are required in the agriculture sector. There is a program for restoration, awareness, nourishment and amelioration of Mother Earth. That is PM Pranam Yojana. I think that would be uh, the game changer as far as the soil quality is concerned. And therefore reducing need for extensive chemical fertilizer subsidy is also one of the important issue. Now, when we talk about doubling farmers income by 2022-23, we have to ask certain questions that how this can be done. And then uh, uh, there, there were committees in order to find out how it needs to be done. But what is important is that how productivity can be increased for the various crops and then movement to high value kind of uh, uh, activities in the agrarian sector 
along with investment in agriculture, particularly R&D, is I think need of the hour. And we have ICAR along with state universities. They are pouring some money investments. But uh, if you see the figures, it is just 0.48% of the value of total agriculture. And that is the R&D expenditure which we are making, which is quite meager. And therefore, total budget is 9,500 crores along with states. And uh, if it doubles, but uh, it is too small at the moment and that needs to be enhanced. So pricing, when we talk about markets need to be rectified and for that we cannot rely entirely on the minimum support price. Enam is the policy, so it can act like Amazon, but there also you need a lot of creativity and national agriculture market can be developed. So if we want, we should be able to buy certain agriculture products from Gujarat or from other regions and farmers of Gujarat, they would be able to sell their products anywhere. Farmers of any state that they would be able to do it. And that is possible if our FPOs, that is farmers, producers, organization, if they succeed, then our farm holding, which is uh, on an average now one hectare, that problem can be solved if they come together. And we have good uh, success stories, especially cooperatives relating to milk. In the same manner, we can try for the farming community. And if they come together, then probably we would be able to overcome these kinds of crises. So cooperatives, they are doing very well in certain states and the way they are functioning, that I, I think can be uh, brought here. Ashok Gula always how the farmers need to be aligned with changing consumption pattern that needs to be studied and whatever people require, whatever they have their demand accordingly, agriculture sector needs to be changed. So uh, precision and agriculture through sensor, through deep irrigation, efficiency in urea use, drones, high technology that needs to be brought brought in the in this particular sector and that is how uh, our uh, didn prime minister atal bihari badpi used to say that if it is for india then bt should be for bharat and then only you find the total productivity may picked up at the higher level but a uh, lot of changes are required to be made in the policy setup India, as I told you, has been giving free food 10 kg per person per family and family of five means 50 kg of staple rice or wheat or combination. So every month they get almost free food for the last three years to more than 800 million people. So almost 60 percent of population is being covered so far. So what is the level and structure of support that needs to be studied? market price support which is given through pricing and uh, that methodology they adapt. Uh, I think I should not go in those details, but as a cost accountant, farm cost concept needs to be developed in a careful manner. Like for calculating this minimum support price, what are the components that need to be considered? Like there are different concepts which are used at the moment by the cost and uh, price commission that is a one cost where you have cash and kind component then rent for paid for lease land of course imputed value of family labor is also considered imputed value of uh, own land is also considered and then in the last budget it was decided whatever the cost comes multiply it by 1.5 so it will be 1.5 times of the cost related to imputed value of family labor and related to the uh, uh, rental value of owned land and uh, of course the interest value of own capital that will be the uh, minimum support price. But I think as a professional cost accountant, we can uh, go through these components of cost and we can suggest that what additional factors need to be considered so that farmers will be benefited 
in terms of proper costing and that I think is one of the uh, important issue. This MSP regime has assured at least 1.5 times more price to farmers for whatever the cost comes. But I feel that calculating cost itself needs to be rechecked again. And then how much is the amount of money government is spending on MSP that also can be seen. The last point is how we can revitalize rural financial market and credit market needs immediate attention and formal credit structure. It is evolved over a period of time. Now the situation has changed, but I think monitoring mechanism needs to be developed relating to this. By the Nathan Committee report that is task force on revival of cooperative credit institutions. That process has already started, but I think that needs to be fastened. Credit cap, there is a need to revise the credit cap from time to time, and in many cases, credit available for agriculture purpose from farmer sources for a hectare of land is much lower. And what I feel that uh, crop loan, it needs to be given, but can we think about the loan for marketing of the commodities? And if that loan is available, then after production, whatever the problem of crisis occurs, that can be solved to some extent. But as such, there is no provision once the product comes out. So for marketing, for distribution, there is no availability of any kind of loan. So there should be proper information bureau and private money lenders. Even now we say that their number has reduced. But private money lenders, they are always not doing bad for the farmers. In fact, many a times they are the helping agents for the farmers. Only thing is that they need to be regulated. Normally we believe and many a times movies also they show that how money lenders exploit the farmers. To some extent it is true, but money lenders are the part of the village culture. So I feel that they are to be regulated so that they can act in a better manner to overcome the problem of farmers. So risk mitigation fund can be created and for that whenever these kind of problems occur, some additional facilities can be given. Water management, of course, I talked about in terms of drip, sprinklers, land management issue, diversification of cropping pattern and for that some incentive scheme can be developed if they go for the diversification of cropping pattern. In some areas they are doing it that if you diversify your crops and if you move from one crop to another crop, you get some kind of incentives. I think that is quite essential. And then as far as the reporting of suicide is concerned, it has to be a responsible reporting and guidelines by the World Health Organization on suicide reporting should be disseminated among the media fraternity to promote responsible report suicides. Otherwise, you find that uh, there are some uh, other issues because once you report the farmer suicides cases, many a times it is reported that it is because of liquor problem and other problems. There are uh, farmer suicide, but that needs to be analyzed in depth and then only uh, uh, scholars with the help of scholars reporting can be done in a better manner. So there should not be any kind of sensationalization of any particular issue that needs to be analyzed. I think I have uh, taken my time because uh, there should be some time for discussion also. I must thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. I, I tried to cover as much as possible, but I know that there are a number of other issues which I couldn't cover. Whenever uh, further time we get, we'll try to do it. So thank you so much. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, your wonderful presentation, meaningful presentation, and a lot of insight has just passed on to our heads also as a cost and management accountant and also as a member of uh, Agriculture Cost Management Board. Uh, so, all these uh, days we were working on some of the areas where we thought that uh, the relevance and importance lies in those areas. But uh, today's session uh, actually opened up uh, a lot of uh, new areas and avenues which we can also think of. As you rightly suggested in your uh, last part of your presentation, that uh, the cost components. So, yeah. 
whatever the present MSP cost component is there. Uh, in addition to that, if you can think beyond the box and uh, um, come to uh, the conclusion of uh, getting more and more cost components which are uh, really helpful for uh, uh, covering the cost and uh, uh, based on that uh, fixing the MSP. I think that yeah. will be helping most of the farmer community to double their income. So that I think uh, it's right. one of the positive uh, takeaway from uh, today's uh, session, sir. And uh, coming back to the crisis, what you are talking about, agri agrarian crisis, uh, definitely it is a heterogeneous uh, uh, issue, uh, which not only within state it changes, but also between the states, there are a lot of things which happens. Uh, the reason for suicides, whatever you told in Maharashtra and whatever is there in places like Karnataka or Tamil Nadu or Kerala is something different. So definitely yeah. these are some of the key challenging issues which needs to be addressed from the policy perspective side. Since agriculture comes under both state and central list, uh, definitely I think yeah. the policy maker need to work on this direction in order to see that one of the uh, uh, one of the major sources of uh, uh, revenue which comes from agriculture sector from the earlier years from 80, 81 to how it has fallen to just 16% uh, in the current uh, contribution towards GDP. I think uh, yeah. that's one of the serious thing because 57% of the population still depend on agriculture and it creates a job for almost 60% of our population. So that was the statistics yeah. what you showed and I think uh, really we need to work towards it. And uh, there were some of the important uh, takeaways which I think uh, personally was very important like uh, uh, the uh, contribution on uh, the, the, what you told about crop diversification and improving the productivity and bringing innovation in the farming and all those yeah. things. And also I, I feel that uh, somewhere you did not highlight one, on one point and uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so yeah. the contribution of MFI, that is uh, micro financial institutions and uh, the contribution of uh, the SHG, self-help groups, especially yeah, in the right. uh, micro level of farming and uh, the household farming uh, uh, contribution, especially in terms of uh, bringing together the networking of uh, the people who are working in that line. I think uh, that is yeah. one of the areas where we need to also focus upon. And also one of the thing which uh, uh, I thought was about continuous improvement, sir. How about bringing continuous improvement in agriculture uh, from yeah. every stage to stage of uh, progress? If we can add some value to whatever the production or whatever the crop pattern we are uh, trying to work on, right? So if we can bring some continuous improvement uh, from the learning process, what we have done or what we have understood, because now we see in Karnataka, we are seeing a lot of people now taking up or pursuing uh, agriculture uh, degrees. So no. this time, uh, almost all the agriculture universities have filled up their seat for uh, agriculture. Uh, uh, either it may be agriculture entrepreneurship or it can be the traditional BSc in agriculture or something like that subjects. So we see that all the universities have already uh, filled up their seats and more and more uh, uh, now uh, students are getting passion towards moving towards agriculture. Uh, for yeah. example, even I, I have some agriculture land, I have started thinking of uh, doing something in my agriculture land and uh, that, uh, that passion is now started uh, coming to all of our people, especially those in uh, cities. They are also developing that passion to go back to agriculture and contribute themselves. So definitely right. agriculture uh, is one of the sector which can absorb a lot of job that it is already proved in terms of statistics also and uh, today's session really was an eye opener for us and still we need to address upon the agriculture um, crisis because it's unique that's what you mentioned in your first part of the presentation you told that right, agriculture sir. is crisis is very unique it is different from one sector to one sector one cropping pattern to another cropping pattern one region to another region within the state itself because the policy intervention may be different from different state perspective and that uh, I think we need to work on that and also the capital formation what you talked about especially in terms of yeah. agriculture contribution contribution towards the capital formation of the nation. So it is right. one of the uh, sector which has given least contribution because of the changes in the uh, sectors like service sector dominating over manufacturing and agriculture sector over the period of time since 1991. So overall, yes, sir, a lot of learning for us. I think uh, now as agriculture cost uh, management board, 
uh, we need to uh, work towards uh, uh, finding out the various uh, ways of how we can address it because we are already in some states uh, the states we are already working with fpos closely and also we are part of uh, the cooperative movement also that is uh, we are part of uh, primary agriculture cooperative society audits and all those things even cost and management yeah. accountant are eligible to do the audits so i think directly we are working with the farmer community in in terms of fpo movement or in terms of cooperative movement i think that is a platform where we need to ma utilize maximum in order to reach to the farmers find their issues especially in terms of arriving at the cost or the components of cost what you are talking about what are the additional component of cost we can think of and uh, suggest to the government uh, especially in terms of uh, fixing the procurement price and msp so definitely it was a eye opening session sir so thank you thank, thank you for you, your sir. time and thank, uh, thank you, you for thank sharing you so your knowledge and uh, you, now sir. yeah yes sir something you wanted to tell sir vinay sir you, are, you wanted to tell something no whatever points uh, you have made i think they are quite relevant and that shows that how carefully you have noted all all those points which are covered yes sir only thing is See, that, a lot of things uh, were there sir but uh, uh, due to time my just uh, shortcut my <laughs> feedback right, right. thank you sir sir it was thank really you. a and the last point uh, which you mentioned uh, only thing is that when you talk about Depends on agriculture. If R&D activity is uh, more, particularly in the agriculture sector, then uh, you find the return on agriculture is five to ten times more than on the subsidies like fertilizer or power or others. So oh. instead of giving subsidies, if we spend more on innovative ideas, innovation, R&D in agriculture, probably we will be able to get returns more than giving subsidies. That is what. many studies have indicated and therefore bajpayee is used to say that jay jawan jay kisan and jay vigyan that jay vigyan only can provide the scientific approach to the agriculture sector correct thank you thank you sir thank you for your uh, uh, enlightenment session sir so now i would request uh, dr nandi ji uh, the our director uh, to propose the formal vote of thanks for today's session over to you sir thank you sir thank you uh, ravinder ji so but today this is a very engaging session <coughs> for this uh, webinar session on prevention of farmer suicides role of agriculture cost management and uh, uh, in absence of our president cna ashwin ji dalwadi vice president cna vibhuti bhushan naik ji uh, our cmb member cma dr kvs and mukti ji and our present in presence of our chairman <coughs> cma arshad desh pandey ji and uh, our main speaker keynote speaker for this session uh, we feel honored to have with us uh, vice chancellor of gh raison university amravati dr vinay sridhar despande ji who is earlier also in our different forums we have heard him yeah, uh, right. very closely and we are again yeah. <laughs> feeling yeah. elated to have his uh, discussion on this very important topic which has been very nicely summed up by uh, professor uh, our cma professor avinash kaushik ji as well as the secretary from this uh, agricultural board uh, dr giri ketraj and of course our inspiring member uh, dr cma dr sri hodi chawadi so uh, will not take much time because we have already heard from our uh, keynote speaker and the summing up session by ravinath koshik ji so uh, there will be lot of things <coughs> for our uh, uh, intake and lot of things to for our future discussion course of action and obviously what the shpandi sir has told that many research work is required uh, to uh, make this thing more vibrant and i think hopefully our this agricultural cost management board they will look uh, look forward for many research work in cost management in agricultural cost uh, field okay so with this i would like to uh, formally end this session thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you nandi ji thank you koshik ji thank, thank you sir thank you so thank, thank, thank you sir thank you to all thank you sir thank you thank you giri ji thank you thank you apology last time last time no problem at all sir conduct okay no no actually there was a some technical fault is there in that this thing
So somehow we could not connect to each other. So this time I ensured that it should be done. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, entire day they worked on this. Somehow we could succeed in But it's okay. Getting, I must. Uh, I must thank my colleague Manish Avasti ji because of him only. Um, thank you, thank you. Whoever so is there behind this Manish particular uh, <laughs> webinar, I particularly thank them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank sir. You so much, thank sir. you. And uh, your thank wisdom you. of uh, words on this agriculture uh, management thing is really helpful to all the farmers who have participants participated in this thing. It will really be helpful to the all. So we'll take forward this uh, whatever yes, we are mission we are running on this particular as yes, um, aspect. Yes, we'll sir. take it forward. I'll be happy to get associated in future also. Thank yes, you, sir. Thank, Thank you so much, Great helps. Thank you.